I have fond memories of the Dex Furious. Back in 2018 when I got it, it was a huge jump in performance for a fledgling Tenno. But time flies and the meta has shifted several times. Is the Dex Furious still worth building in 2024? Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be re-diving deeper into the Dex Furious. As per usual, we'll have an introductory level setup and an endgame setup as well. I will be focusing a bit more on the new players because, well, they need it, and this is an awesome weapon if you're just getting into Warframe now. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Dex Furious. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Dex Furious is an automatic hit scan secondary weapon with a rather lightweight attack. This might seem like some kind of projectile going on, but as soon as you pull your trigger you will be getting damage on your enemies and yes, you do want to go for headshots. The reload is decent considering the magazine size of 100. As for the accuracy, well, let's say it's a bit more spray and pray than sniper rifle. Most of the bullets will be landing, however, within the crossers. I recommend using the weapon within 10 meters of your target. And again, go for those headshots. Mod capacity 60 out of 60, and theoretically there should be no universe where the Dex Furious comes with only 30 out of 30. This being a celebration weapon, it comes with its own weapon slot and its own catalyst already installed, so you don't need to invest in that. What you will need to do is put on the right mod. Pirate is good at 20 magazine of 100 with the ammo maximum of 400 as previously stated. Accuracy is medium. And you also can have a look at the deviation in degrees. We used to have a number as an accuracy before. That was confusing. This is less confusing. Trigger automatic rivet disposition of full 5 little balls out of 5 little balls. We love not important, this signifies the fact that you can get really powerful ribbons for this weapon. It basically works like this. The more popular a weapon is, the more powerful a weapon is, the less the ribbon disposition you're going to be getting. Essentially, this ribbon system was introduced initially at least to balance out weapons and to give weapons which are not all that competitive a fighting chance. So automatically, what is powerful doesn't get powerful ribbons, and what is not powerful can get extremely powerful ribbons. Bear in mind, that will not help you with RNG, however. You can get a fantastic roll or you can get a garbage roll, which is not usable. That's on you and RNG. Critical chance of 14%, which is not great. Critical multiplier at 2x, which is decent. And a status chance at 28%, which is actually quite good. And the reason for that, we are putting a lot of damage instances into our target very quickly. Therefore, a lot of potential chances to get that proc on. What am I gonna proc though? Well, for that you need to take a look at the damage. Impact Puncture and Slash, these are the free physical types in Warframe. Normally the most revered, the most wanted is gonna be that Slash damage. Puncture isn't bad however because it will help you out with that crit. 25% fully stacked. And this is a bonus additive after, which means it doesn't care about your measly 14% chance base. It just adds 25% on top of what you already have. So if I'm hitting a target that has all the puncture procs, I'm going to be getting that 14 plus 25 by default with no mods whatsoever. 39%, which isn't all that bad. A standard introductory level build will be composed of damage with Hornet Strike, multi-shot with Bell Diffusion and Lethal Torrent, this one also offering a hefty 60% fire rate increase. It's a nightmare mod, and nightmare missions are nightmare in name only. Get to farming because there are a couple of mods that you do need for your weapon builds, and not only. Now that fire rate means higher DPS, obviously, but it also means we're gonna be going bone dry on ammo quicker. We don't have that many bullets, which is why we have pistol ammo mutation in the Exilus slot. Now this might mean that you have to unlock the Exilus slot. Not true, if you don't want to invest into the weapon that much or you simply don't have the necessary resources, you can simply use it instead of Scorch on the main slot. When it comes to the elemental combos and elemental mod that you should be using on the weapon, this comes down to what exactly are you gonna be fighting. Here's the deal, most Tenno don't really want to change their mods from mission to mission, which is why they have multiple setups or just build one to fit everything. The truth is, one size doesn't really 
fit everything in Warframe if you want the best results. Corrosive, however, is a pretty good bet against heavily armored targets. Against the infested, in general, heat is a pretty good idea. Here's the deal about the infested. They're not that powerful, but there's a lot of them. They tend to swarm you with their numbers. As for the corpus, the bucket heads, they have big shields. You want to hit them with magnetic and toxin. Critical chance and critical damage is not really all that negotiable on most weapons. While the Dex Furious can be built without CC and CD, it's not exactly the best of ideas. Creeping Bullseye and Target Cracker. Creeping Bullseye gives you a whopping 200% crit chance, but it also takes away 20% fire rate. Now it's not that big of a deal, especially considering we are going to be using Lethal Torrent on the weapon. First up, the Grenier Battle Group level 100. As per usual, go for headshots. I mean, tell me my friends, what more does a new player actually need? From these targets, the Butchers are very, very easy to kill. The Heavy Gunners, however, have a whole lot more HP. There's also a special breed of Corrupted Heavy Goons, the Corrupted Kind. Those technically are their own faction, but they are still vulnerable to the same elements. However, they are a bit more beefy, they have a lot more HP. As you can see, versus the Grenier, we don't really have any issue with this build. What about the Infested? Can I use the exact same build on the Infested as well? Now I want you to pay attention to something. Some of these here targets have some sort of weird white thing around their health, and some do not. If I'm gonna hit one of these shielded targets, it takes a lot of bullets to get that shield down. But did you notice that? As soon as the shield is gone, they basically blow up. That was from the heat procs. That's why we have Scorch on the weapon. If I'm just to hit a target without that shield, I can completely annihilate it with just a couple of bullets. Something is buffing these targets. Look for the elite-ish units and take them out. The ancient healers right now are buffing the rest of my targets. Taking those out means that nobody has that shield-ish over their health, which means in turn I can absolutely annihilate whatever stands before me in just a couple of bullets per target. It is important to know what some of these units can do. Even if they are Eximus or not, they can buff adjacent targets, so bear that one in mind. As for the build performance, well, we can clear out the infested with this build as well, so there's no need to modify it. Now, you can make it more powerful against the infested, but normally you shouldn't really need to. Finally, the Corpus Battle Group. Now, these guys have a whole lot of shield. Look at the blue portion in front of their health. Normally, however, they're pretty easy to kill and take out. Again, go for headshots. And if you don't know where the headshot is at this thing, it's not this, that's the cannon. Shoot it, there. They have a bit of a fanny pouch, that's technically their head. Not for all units, however. And that's pretty much it for the new player portion of the guide. This build can be used successfully in what I like to call normal level content. Normal level content is up until level 100. Now granted, this is not exactly the most cheapest build in the world. Hornet Strike is expensive to max out, so leave just a couple from the top. You will not notice a big performance difference in gameplay. But let's assume for a second that you're not a new player and for some reason you want to invest in the Dex Furious and max it out you're gonna be looking at something like this. First of all, you gotta get yourself a Riven because they're pretty dirt cheap and you're looking at a disposition of 5 out of 5. Multi-shock, critical chance, punch through and minus damage to infest it. Not exactly the best Riven for the weapon, but still in the vein of what you're looking for. CC and CD with Prime Pistol Gamba, Prime Target Cracker, Prime Convulsion, of course Galvanized Shot, Galvanized Diffusion, Accelerated Isotope and Pistol Pestilence combining with Prime Convulsion. As you can see, we're making radiation and corrosive on the weapon. Why? That's right, we're gonna go fight the Murmur, the latest faction to be added to Warframe. Here's another option that you can go for. Swap out Accelerated Isotope for a little bit of heat with Scorch. And in that case, you can swap out Secondary Merciless and the flat damage it offers, plus the reload speed for even more flat damage with Cascadia Flare. You should be getting enough flat damage from Galvanized Shot, however, try this way first and then swap out and see which one you prefer more. Murmur Battle Group 205 Steel Path modifiers enabled. Now let's see what the Dex Furious can do. Oh my god, it killed something. It did kill something. But you know, these are the weaker enemies of the Murmur. These little doggies here, you can get an easy headshot on them. When it comes to the Colervin, I still recommend you taking off the hands, but that will not proc your arcanes. If you just go for body shots, because that's not the head, it will take a couple of bullets to take out your target. So it's not a bad performer. It can even increase the potency of the build. But what is my problem right now? I'm running out of ammo. Not running out of ammo, I'm completely bone dry on ammo. However, if we're gonna extend the build to Warframe buffs, we gotta fix for that, don't we, gentlemen? As you know, we got Arcane Piss... Single S? Toledo. Somewhere. Here we go. 
Now this one on headshot kill would give you a 60% chance for 102% ammo efficiency for 12 seconds. And this, on a theoretical level, should fix our problem. But will it really? Go for headshots. Got my headshot kill and now I can spray and pray. La 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 la. I'm not getting a whole lot of damage because the weapon is not fully stacked currently, but I'm not stopping the firing. The firing must not be stopping. And I can just do this. This is the power of Arcane Pistolero. It's absolutely freaking phenomenal. Now granted, it can be used on other weapons as well to even greater extent, but the point is you can make the weapon work if you so desire. Welcome to Deimos, now let's see what the Dex Furious can do against base level Steel Path. We're fighting the Murmur. And as long as my Arcane Pistolero stays up, I have no problem in completely annihilating whatever stands before me. Because while my bullets may not be doing a whole lot of damage, there's a lot of them. Technically infinite, as long as, again, Pistolero is up. And I gotta be honest with you, it is a whole lot of fun to spray and not worry about your actual ammo. However, the party will stop at a certain point. You might run out of ammo at a certain point, and then you might switch to your primary weapon. And at the end of the day, what's the problem in that? For base level steel path, you don't need more than this. Definitely not. If you're gonna try to do something in the higher levels, Here's the thing, I'm seeing this opinion way more often than I should. I did level cap with XYZ weapon, that means it's a good weapon. Or I couldn't do level cap with XYZ weapon, that means it's a bad weapon. Level cap should always be seen as a test of your entire loadout. There's not just a gun showing up and shooting stuff. It's your loadout that should matter. Technically, you can get level cap with the Stug. It doesn't make it a good weapon. And you can fail level cap with the Torrid. It doesn't make it a bad weapon. The Dex Furious is a fantastic introductory level weapon. It's cheap, it comes already pre-installed with a catalyst and the weapon slots, and I highly recommend it to newer players starting to get into the game. As for veterans, well, if this level of performance is enough for you, then you're all good to go. Are you there? Is that, is that you, Ants? Hold on, hold on, back up, back up. Stop moving. You know I can't hit moving targets. I'm like most Warframe players. That's it. Acolyte performance? Not bad. The only issue is actually hitting the blasted thing. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Hey, and if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's going to be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right about now. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.